Hello everyone, welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Hope you guys are fine. So in today's ground zero series, we'll be talking regarding sedimentation. Okay guys, so generally many students know about sedimentation, but they are not very much accurate or they know the things, but they don't know in detail what does sedimentation mean, why do we use it and all those things. So guys, when you talk about sedimentation, there is something which comes into action is specific gravity. So the whole hero in the sedimentation is specific gravity. That is those suspended particles who have weight, who have specific gravity greater than that of water. A water is basically, it can be waste water or it can be raw water, will settle down under the action of its own weight. So generally when you talk about uh, basic sedimentation we have the hero specific gravity and specific gravity stands for what weight of solids of given volume upon weight of fluid of equal volume now comes the question that when i'm talking about sedimentation and i'm telling you that the hero of this is specific gravity so the next question which comes into action is do the specific gravity varies for different types of solids yes if you talk about organic solids, the specific gravity is generally in the range of 1 to 2. If not mentioned anything, we take it as 1.2. Specific gravity of inorganic solids generally varies from 2.6 to 2.9. If not mentioned, we take it as 2.65. Now coming up further, let's talk about it in further detailing that, that sedimentation, this process by the help of which the removal of fine suspended solids, those solids which are not removed in screening are being removed in the sedimentation tank, okay, because these are finer in nature and we know screening does the removal of heavier and last suspended solids. So the question comes into picture is when you're talking about the removal of last suspended solids which was done in screening, now the fine suspended solids will be removed in sedimentation tank. So the question comes, uh, do we have one sedimentation tank or two sedimentation tanks? So it varies. Varies ma'am, what do you mean? Like, if you talk regarding the raw water treatment, that water which is supplied to your homes from the source, there we go for only one sedimentation tank. But if you talk about wastewater treatment where the water from your homes after being used is to be disposed. So for that we have two sedimentation tanks. One is primary sedimentation tank and the other one is secondary sedimentation tank. So you guys can see it here also primary sedimentation tank and secondary sedimentation tank. So basically the purpose is you want the removal of fine suspended solids. Now comes into action that do we have a well-defined single sort of sedimentation tank or they vary according to the shapes or they vary according to the functioning. What is it? So let's talk about it. Now, when you talk about the various types of sedimentation tank, broader sense we study two, but actually there are three types of sedimentation tank. First is question type tank, which you call it as fix type tank also, and you call it as fill and draw type tank. Secondly is continuous flow type tank. In this you have horizontal flow type tank and vertical flow type tank. And the last one is high rate basins. If you talk about the ones which we focus predominantly is type A and type B. Now coming up further, so you can see, let's move towards fill and draw type sedimentation tank first. As the name suggests, you fill the water in the tank, the water which is to be treated. Okay, you fill the water. Here, you are bringing the water to rest. That means turbulence is zero. There is no half a hazard movement of water. So when it comes to rest, the particles will eventually settle down. After that, you will take out that water. That means you will draw the water. So you can see here, this inlet zone is there. From here, the water will go into the settling zone. Inlet zone, let us suppose the water from screening or water from aeration will go into the inlet zone. From the inlet zone, it will go into the settling zone where specific gravity will come into action because you have made the turbulence zero. The water is at rest. So the particles who have a higher specific gravity will eventually settle down. So here, what you will see, settling will take place. And that water will again go to the outlet. 
okay so you have settling zone the particles the solids which you have settled down along with the combination of water they will form sludge so that's the reason you have a sludge zone okay so you have four zones if we go in further detail so you can see it here that inlet is there then silt deposit tank floor is there and you have valve now why does this valve is provided for the proper regulation so that uh, the suspended solids get settled down and we can eventually get higher efficiency so valves is provided for that now if you want to see as i told you about the zones so inlet zone settling zone where the settlement of particles will take place eventually it will lead to the formation of sludge and after that we have what we have the we have the outlet zone so this will be four okay now coming up next if you want to see the 3d phase of it see i don't want that you are seeing the plan or you are seeing the section you can see it in every manner so if you want to see the 3d view of it you can go through this the inlet zone settling zone sludge zone and uh, specifically as you already know that uh, if you talk about waste water the sludge which is there you cannot directly dispose it which you call it as primary sludge so we go for further treatment in sludge digestion tank sludge if it is okay and it can be disposed without any adverse effects it's okay but if it is not you have to do its further treatment before it's disposed okay now talking about fill and draw type tank you should know that we design it for maximum daily demand the detention time uh, varies the detention time varies but here you basically have three tanks two is operational and one is standby two operational one standby why because see generally we take it as 24 hours of detention time and uh, the period of cleaning varies from 6 to 12 hours okay so like when one is being functioning when one is being cleaning other has to be functioning so we have to have to in between if some got operational troubles and all is there maintenance for that tank is gone so that is the reason we should have one standby so minimum we require three tanks two operational one standby question type tank is designed for maximum daily demand okay and uh, you can do manual cleaning of the sludge because sludge has to be cleaned from time to time otherwise accumulation of sludge will take place so we will get if if you don't clean it accumulation of sludge will take place as i said and eventually the amount or the uh, place which is available for settling zone will reduce okay so fill and draw type question type fixed type because turbulence is zero filling the water settlement drawing the water okay so this is the thing which you should know now talking about <coughs> excuse me continuous flow type tank here you have horizontal flow type tank which if you see from the top you will see it as rectangular in nature here also you have inlet zone you have the settling zone you have the sludge zone and outlet zone so now what is the difference between fixed type tank and continuous flow type tank when you talk about fixed type tank actually what is happening in this case here the movement is taking place that means the turbulence is not zero movement of water is taking place obviously the turbulence is not there at a very high speed that half a hazard manner water is flowing but still it is not at rest to that means water is flowing in this case so you will be like ma'am when the water was at rest obviously what will happen the suspended solids will settle what about when the water is moving how will the suspended solid settle so let me tell you basically when you divide it into two zones settling zone and sludge zone there are two assumptions which we take let me tell you assumptions are taken to simplify our calculations so we assume that if a particle reaches at the bottom of this settling zone or you can say the top of sludge zone it is removed firstly secondly we also take an assumption see obviously different size of particles will be there obviously it's not like only 5 mm size of particle will be there or 4 mm size of particle will be there the concentration the type the size of particle varies eventually we take it as spherical that is an assumption but we assume that the particle is the concentration of particles because obviously size will vary for sure it's not you will get 2 mm particle throughout the tank only no other size is not practically feasible and practically possible 
so generally what happens we assume first is a particle is said to be uh, removed if it reaches the bottom of the settling zone or you can say top of class zone secondly thing comes concentration of particles all the particles all the sizes across the vertical section of the inlet end okay we assume it is as same so if 5 mg per liter of a particle is there okay this is the concentration of let us suppose 4 mm size of particle so we'll assume this 5 mg per liter particle and let us suppose the size of the tank example i'm taking arbitrary 10 meter is the height of the tank so we'll assume per meter you will be getting what per meter you will be getting the same concentration of particles along the vertical section this is the meaning of it okay now but the question is not answered ma'am the turbulence is not zero how will the particle be removed so eventually what will happen when the particle is traveling forward it is also traveling downward so it is traveling forward downward forward downward so what is happening forward downward so eventually till the end of the tank when it travel that l length eventually the particle was here will go here okay so along with the flow velocity in the forward direction it has a settling velocity in the vertically downward direction that is the resultant which you are getting here Clear? Yeah. So this actually takes place. So you are not making the turbulence zero in this case. Now you can see one of the rectangular. Uh, generally, uh, it's not rectangular. The plan is rectangular. Okay, when you see it from the top, you will see it as rectangular. So you guys can see the uh, the pixels. Actually, I took it from Google. Uh, so the pixels are not that proper, but uh, you will get an idea how the sedimentation tanks basically looks like. okay if it's possible you guys can go to the nearest treatment units uh, in your cities and you can have a look at it okay now you have rectangular similarly you have what vertical flow type tank you have horizontal flow type tank similarly you have vertical flow type tank now you will be like ma'am what is the difference between that see when you were talking about rectangular horizontal flow type tank in that you were talking about the rectangular plan was there the resultant velocity was linear but here the resultant velocity is not linear it will be parallel why why because here the movement of water you can see that there is a central pipe a central pipe is there from which the water moves and then the water moves like this on both the sides on both the sides eventually the suspended solids will settle and you can see if you want to see here the suspended solids will settle and it will be removed through proper mechanism so here the flow of water takes place radially you are not getting the resultant velocity as linear which you used to get in the case of which you used to get in the case of horizontal flow type tank okay generally the plan of it if you talk about it is circular in nature and if you have difficulty in visualizing you can go through this this is just the figure which i have i have told you this is the only figure this one is the only figure which i have told you here okay but i have broadened it so see water will move in water will move in radial direction water will move in radial direction it will be collected and it will be passed further whether it is for filtration or any other process why the sludge will be collected from bottom because obviously the fine suspended solids will settle under its own weight and what will happen formation of sludge will take place and depending upon whether the organic concentration is there or what not they will be disposed okay now talking about next is uh, if you talk about the plan plan is when you look at from the top so you will see that the plan is circular in nature and you are like you want to calculate the volume so the volume is given empirically how if you talk about volume is given by d square 0.785h Plus point zero one one t. This is very much prevalent here. Also, you design it for maximum daily demand. The detention time is comparatively less. Uh, it varies from whether it is two to six hours, whether it is for plain sedimentation, or you are adding some chemicals. If you are adding some chemicals, the detention time reduces. Okay, volume is equal to discharge into detention time, which has been mentioned to you. settling velocity settling velocity is the velocity with which the particle settles in the tank or you can call it as the surface overflow rate okay surface overflow rate let me tell you this is the velocity of the design size of particle let us suppose when you are designing a tank you design it for a certain amount of discharge similarly you design it for a particular particle also 
okay so that velocity of that concerned particle is known as surface overflow rate or you call it as velocity of the concerned size of particle so if you talk about settling velocity vs or surface overflow rate in short you call it as sor okay so if you want to calculate area area is equal to discharge upon velocity and area if you look at the plan of the vertical flow type tank it is circular so area will be pi by 4d square with the help of which you will be able to calculate that diameter and if you want to visualize how the circular tank looks like so you can see this is the circular sedimentation tank here also the movement will be taking place the turbulence will not be zero and what you will see is here during the movement the resultant velocity will not be linear it will be parabolic in nature and, and you will see here that the sludge will be collected at the bottom which will be further taken out okay so this is regarding circular sedimentation tank one more thing i told you regarding vertical flow type tank now here if one more thing is there if you want to calculate the settling velocity of the particles because i just told you vs is the settling velocity or the surface overflow rate now how to calculate settling velocity that is given by stokes law when you assume that the particle is spherical in nature and all those things so <laughs> if you want to calculate settling velocity there are different things different things means whether the flow is laminar whether the flow is turbulent whether the flow is transitional so all these we'll be discussing in the next upcoming lectures when i'll be talking regarding stokes law because there's a lot more to discuss in today's session i want to tell you what sedimentation tank is about what you get here so here you have different types of tank you have fill and draw type tank and continuous flow type tank to be precise then we talked about horizontal flow type tank vertical flow type tank and then i actually showed you how the horizontal flow type tank is and how the vertical flow type tank is now how to analyze or how to design this tank that is a separate thing so stay tuned with me guys for the upcoming more lectures in ground zero series and one more thing let me tell you we have completed suspended solids thinning and sedimentation so in the next thing we'll be discussing is the questions practice so the questions practice session do attend this this session is on saturday at 8 pm so stay tuned with me guys till then take care of yourself bye bye good night and study hard